Back before the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's attack on Ukraine upended the global economy, a land corridor linking Europe and the Asia-Pacific often took a back seat when it came to international trade. But that could be about to change, according to Turkey's Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu. He said that in the aftermath of the pandemic and the conflict in Ukraine, the world is hungry for more diversified trade and energy routes. Speaking at a regional meeting with the foreign ministers of Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, Cavusoglu said that the Middle Corridor, a land route that includes Turkey, the Caucasus and Central Asia, is now one of the world's most crucial transport links. This year, the route is expected to see a six-fold increase in cargo transported. Part of China's trillion-dollar Belt and Road initiative that looks to recreate a modern Silk Road, the Middle Corridor will play a vital role in transporting goods, people and energy between Europe and the Asia-Pacific. Turkey, which has played a leading role in increasing the route's importance, is also investing heavily in new infrastructure projects in countries like Azerbaijan, Georgia and Kazakhstan. And for more on the rising importance of the Middle Corridor, joining me now from Ankara is Vakur Sumer. He's an associate professor at Sajuk University. I'm from Istanbul. Nazgul Kentshetay, she is a journalist covering developments in Central Asia and Caucasus. A warm welcome to both and welcome to Straight Talks. So, Vakur, what's the importance of the Middle Corridor? Yeah, the Middle Corridor is one of the shortest routes between uh, producing centers such as China and Southeast Asia, uh, between uh, these centers and Europe and also even uh, beyond, and also including the Middle East. Uh, it is, except from being the shortest route, it is also the most economical route uh, when compared to the Northern Corridor, also compared to the Southern so-called Belt. Uh, through the maritime route. So uh, it, it has some comparative advantage uh, when compared to other routes, which connects the producing and the uh, consuming centers of the world. Uh, and its importance uh, have even increased in the recent uh, decades or so with the institutionalization of the Turkic uh, Union, so to speak, uh, Turkic uh, community, as well as the uh, concomitant in infrastructure development uh, throughout Eurasia. So, uh, Nazgul, Turkey's foreign minister says the middle corridor uh, will see a six-fold increase year on year. What would that mean for the global economy and what kind of a trade potential we're talking about here? Uh, as you know, the global supply chain, which has been deeply injured by the COVID, has become even more dangerous with the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. After all this development, many countries, especially European countries and USA, announced the economic sanctions against Russia, uh, which is occupied by Ukraine. Along with this process, the leading global brands and logistics industry started to suspend their services to Russia. Trade and transportation uh, between Asia and Europe is carried out through three many corridors. The northern corridor which, um, in which Russia is located, the southern corridor passing through Iran and middle corridor, and the middle corridor, uh, including Turkey, are strategically important for many countries. However, Russia's attack on Ukraine uh, exacerbated uh, the existing security problems in the northern corridor. The Southern Corridor, uh, on the other hand, it seems as risky due to embargoes against uh, Iran and conflicts in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be noted that uh, the situation makes the Middle Corridor, uh, which reaches from Turkey to the Caucasus and from there um, to the Central Asian, uh, Asian China, which includes uh, Turkmenistan and uh, Kazakhstan by crossing Caspian Sea and more available. So in that case, uh, do you think Russia is losing its grip on Central Asian economies? Uh, so, considering Russia's current behavior pattern, Turkey does not uh, have the luxury of staying behind from efforts and attempts to open, like, uh, the Zengazer line, which will add wells to the middle corridor by taking into account the delicate balance um, in the region. So, in this regard, uh, so it may be beneficial to increase contact with China and Central Asian Turkic republics. Parallel to this, uh, initiative should be taken to activate it uh, the economic financial power of the like uh, G7 and the um, Euro uh, European Union and uh, opportunities and can offer provided that the um, appreciated grounding is prepared in advance. So establishing <coughs> the uh, Turkey Nakhchivan Zengizur Baku line is not a choice for Turkey. It's a necessary um, despite of uh, Russia.
So, uh, Vakur, what do you think? What kind of opportunities could liberated Azerbaijani territories offer for the connection of Karabakh to the world? What would that mean? And are Iran's interests being hurt there? Um, yeah, it's, an, it's a very significant development of the recent years, the end of the hostilities in uh, Azerbaijan and its surrounding, actually. Uh, the, the importance of Middle Corridor increased, definitely, and its uh, competitiveness probably will increase if Armenia would be included in the greater scheme of uh, so-called this uh, middle corridor. And the Zengezur corridor, of course, uh, opens up new horizons. It will even shorten the distance between the, the two centers. And of course, uh, it will not uh, a lose, lose scenario for all the, the countries in the region, actually. Uh, at first, it may be seen, it might be seen as an uh, obstacle against Iran, Iranians' aims in the region, but uh, I will. I believe Iran will also benefit from the development of the uh, Middle Corridor and the mm -hmm. peace and stability uh, in the Southern Caucasus, uh, because the trade uh, volume will be increased. So Iran will also benefit from this, and Iranian goods will be in cir circulation too, if the uh, stability and the uh, situation in Iran permits. So in the in the midterm and long term, we can see that uh, the end of hostilities, the cease of violence uh, in the South Caucasus yes. will benefit to all parties. Uh, but now, how will the latest tensions in the South Caucasus, as Vakur mentioned, especially between Iran, Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan, Armenia affect the Middle Corridor? You know, uh, Turkey, which has recently followed a more active policy in the regional and global arena, has also drawn attention of the Central Asian Turkic Republics. They especially requested to cooperate with Tur Turkey on the defense industry. Uh, but um, here I, I want to talk about more w about Caucasus, the Nagorno-Karabakh War. Uh, put uh, in an end uh, one of the chronic problems uh, of the South Caucasus, but the political and economical problems of Armenia continue uh, to threaten the stability of the region. Uh, Turkey's attempts to open trans trans transportation and energy lines in the middle corridor, which is the shortest road between China and Europe, may be a great change to both uh, to elevate Armenians' problems and to establish uh, lasting peace in the region. So, Vakur, what does a deepened cooperation between Turkey, Azerbaijan and uh, Kazakhstan mean uh, for the global supply chains? I mean, what does that tell us about Turkey's transportation policy? Yeah, uh, all three countries you have mentioned are uh, very central in this uh, middle corridor and the, the shortest route. Uh, all Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan and Turkey are significant partners. Turkey has um, invested heavily in the infrastructure, so did Azerbaijan and um, the Kazakhstan. So we have now the Baku, Tbilisi, Kars uh, Railway. We have also Marmaray. And Kazakhstan is also heavily investing in uh, expanding and also modernizing its infrastructure through the railways and through highways. So the, the container uh, capacity of this uh, route uh, has uh, increased tremendously in the couple of uh, years or so. And uh, out of 10 million containers uh, which are directed from China to the West, uh, only 5 to 6 percent is now carried through the middle corridor. So there is a huge potential. And this potential will definitely uh, rest uh, not only the infrastructure, but also the continue, continued uh, political will of these countries in order to uh, maintain this pace of investments. And the, uh, the Caspian Pass is also very important in this respect. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the modernization of the ports capacities and the uh, infrastructure there and shortening the periods of uh, customs formalities will uh, greatly affect and positively affect uh, this uh, increase in trade, uh, in flow. Yes. Of course, uh, not only trade, but also uh, significant exchanges are occurring between uh, the West and East, which is also another benefit of this uh, middle corridor. So Nazgul, uh, what are the possible challenges before the revival of the uh, new Silk Road? Is it likely uh, to add up to the rivalry between China and the United States? Uh, yeah, maybe it will be a great uh, war uh, started from uh, USA to 
uh, China, especially um, in the uh, Asian Pacific. So, but here uh, a lot of important uh, geography as a Turkey country. So, for example, Kazakhstan has followed a more active policy in uh, cooperating with Turkey in the strategic areas, and it's very important because uh, Kazakhstan is the head of the middle corridor, is the head of the. Mm. Um, Chinese one road and belt uh, projects. Uh, that's why uh, Turkey's success, success in Libya, the victories brought by its cooperation with Azerbaijan during the Second Karabakh War, caused a change uh, to the perception that uh, Russia always win, uh, like in the uh, Turkic world. So uh, here we can say, like, uh, Turkey's, Tur Turkey is trying to pursue China for a project, but uh, Beijing has doubted that the region is uh, safe. It's claimed that uh, Turkey is, is always willing to allow a branch of the line to pass through like Armenia in the order proof that uh, the line is safe. So the, I guess that the, the, the time will show us. So, um, Vakur, is the middle corridor directed at any country in the region? Actually, it's a win-win scenario, as I have uh, said. Uh, it's a broad project than we have uh, expected, actually. Even Afghanistan is a part of the project. Also, the Turkmenistan is a part of the project. Uh, they are actually involved in this greater scheme through the Lapis Lazuli, uh, Lapis Lazuli project, which includes... Turkmenistan and Afghanistan in the in the equation because they are they have also great potential for uh, for increasing the trade volumes uh, throughout the route uh, and even I believe uh, not only China but the uh, the the hinterland with behind China will also be uh, positively affected by the middle corridor so uh, because uh, they are also becoming significant exporters in the global trade. Uh, such as uh, Malaysia, uh, even Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam. Uh, these are also in close uh, linkages with uh, China. Yes. Uh, so middle corridor will affect all these countries' trade volumes uh, to be directed over the Turkic world, over uh, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, uh, Turkmenistan possibly, yes. uh, and Turk Turkey definitely. All right, Vakur and Nazgul, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.